Hey guys, we landed ourselves in Great Falls, Montana at a KOA campground during a freeze. And as a result, we had to winterize our trailer a fair bit for living in. So I'm gonna show you guys what we had to do and some of the stuff that we had to get in order to make it through a freeze. So guys, I'm a Canadian originally. We, when we camp in Canada, we camp during the summertime and we typically, and I say typically, there are people out there that do it, but we typically put up our trailers for the winter and you know, winterize them and don't try to live in them during the freezing cold temperatures. But it's a kind of seems to be a growing community of people that are trying to live in trailers during their winters and they, they're doing it. They're doing it in Great Falls, Montana. They're doing it in Canada as well. So for me, it's kind of new, but for lots of people, it may not be. So what happened for us is we were off for a job in Kansas. We left when temperatures were 104 degrees, uh, air condition was running constantly, and we were, we were expected to be there for a month. Then my husband says to me, I have a chance to go to a job in Montana. Do you want to go? And the Canadian me was like, heck yes. I can't wait to see my family. They're not far away. Let's go. So I'm going to show you guys what we had to purchase, uh, what we did to keep it going, and it all worked very, very well. So hopefully that does help you. It certainly did come with costs, so that's something to be aware of. And it may not have been entirely necessary. The freezing temperatures did get down to about 6 degrees Fahrenheit, minus 15-ish, somewhere in that range, and I might not be calculating that totally correct, um, but it did get fairly cold but there's definitely colder temperatures, but we prepared just in case because we did not want to have to deal with a frozen pipe system or anything like that. So we'll go through what we did. For some, it might seem like overkill. For others, it might have seemed like just right or not enough. Uh, for us, it ended up being perfect. Um, certainly, certainly not cheap, but let's go through it. We spent about $300 just in the insulation in the wood to go around the trailer, screws, and the tape. The tape was actually phenomenally expensive at $30 a roll. We didn't need the whole roll though, so you certainly don't need to buy multiple, not for what we did anyways. If you have a much larger trailer or you're doing it all, you might need to. I actually think the whole roll probably would do our entire trailer. The other expense we had was on a heated hose and it was quite expensive, $100, $120. However, I highly recommend it has had no issues. It's been great. The upgrade that we made was getting larger propane tanks. These were quite useful for us, uh, keeping the heat going a little bit longer because well, when you get really in those low temperatures, you will start to use a lot more so propane. So what we did was actually put in insulation board in the areas just around our piping. If we were gonna be here all year and all season, we certainly would not have done it this way. We would have actually done the entire trailer so we would cover all this but because we were only just trying to get by until about November maybe at worst December we just did our pipe area for those that have to do this and actually go an extended period through a deep freeze I would definitely recommend doing all of your trailer and doing your sides because those are definitely areas where we found that the cold air came through so we just survived by pumping up the propane and um, obviously going through a lot of it but it would be much more efficient if you had your whole trailer done however that being said this worked perfectly for preventing the pipes from freezing so this is the board that we use and what we would do is we cut out sections and put our heater and we ran a small heater underneath the trailer and surprisingly it was quite efficient. This kept the heat in really well. We got these boards from Home Depot. I think they're the three inch boards. I could be wrong, but they were they're quite thin. Uh, we put them on, you can see that we put them on backwards. My husband says, I blame the beer. I actually felt it looked nicer and it didn't honestly affect the functionality of it. Again, if I was doing this for an extended winter where we're actually going to be in Montana for the coldest part of their season, I'd want to do it right. We were just trying to get by. So this board was about $10 a board. And by the time we got done our trailer, we have a 30, I think a 31 foot trailer. Um, by the time we got it done, we used five boards for just the piping area. So my husband bought two by fours. The two by fours are all the way around the bottom of the trailer so that he could screw the boards into that. And then they're just taped uh, up against the trailer on the inside. So 
By no means did we do a perfect job on this. People have done way better jobs I've seen online, like people do framing and have doors and all that kind of stuff. We were just hoping to make it a month and get by, and it, we did. So it worked well, it worked just fine. And in fact, we have a temperature gauge that is, um, and I'll put this in the link in the description as well, but you put one piece underneath the trailer and then it has a little reader out on the kitchen table and I can tell what the temperature is down below and it never ever even came close to zero. It was always seemingly to be in about the 38 to 45 range. One tip I would give you is to put a bucket over your sewer connection in the event that it snows and then you don't end up with a buried sewer connection if you're disconnecting your pipe all the time. Now inside the trailer there are only a couple areas that kind of gave us a bit of an issue with coolness. Uh, the first one being the front door and the second one being the back of the unit where the bedroom is where it wasn't completely 100% covered. The door put off a lot of cold air and I've actually found something online and I'll include it in the description down below although I did not test it out it just didn't seem like it would make sense for a short time here but they do make covers that cover the door and I'd highly recommend it. The amount of cold that comes in through the door is incredible. In fact our door actually froze at the bottom so much air was getting in. It even has like a little brush thing at the bottom for opening and closing but it's still uh, let in a lot of cold air. So we estimate it probably cost us around $800 to basically prepare for the freeze. That includes all the wrapping, the wood, the screws, the tape, the heaters, the temperature gauges, uh, the extra propa propane bottles. It does not include propane. Um, I can't remember, oh, the hose. So it definitely was not cheap, somewhere in between probably six to $800 in that range in order to just prep and prepare for freeze. The other side of this would have been if we had let the pipes freeze and that would have been thousands of dollars to fix. So I'm really glad we spent it. We will certainly reuse all of the materials that we possibly can so that if we ever end up in Montana again, we will have them handy. We're a super good resource on winterizing and asking questions about um, prepping your trailer for a freeze. There is a really good Facebook group. Uh, I think it's Winterize RV group um, on Facebook. Look them up, they're fantastic. Tons of people who are living in deep freezes. That RV group has people that are very, very experienced in deep freezes and not minor freezes and deep, deep freezes. We're talking about Montana, January, February. All right, you guys, that's it. Hope it helps. Happy travels.